Long-term viewers of this channel may remember a video I did a couple years ago about the intercom system that I have here in my video production trailer. And that video has been fairly popular on the channel. And I've made a lot of changes to my intercom since that, especially a few months ago, back in December, I replaced the Behringer X-Air mixer that I was using with a Behringer X32 rack mixer what I'm, that, I'm, that I'm now using for doing all the intercom related functions in the trailer. And that's going over Dante. So I've really embraced Dante as the heart of my intercom system uh, on top of the Dante that I was already using for the audio system here in the trailer as well. So in this video today I want to kind of go through how all of that works to show you all the different pieces that I have in place and give you demonstrations of how all those things work and let you hear what the intercom actually sounds like because it actually sounds much better than the other intercom systems that I've out there that are out there mostly because it's based around Dante and it's the audio is 48 kilohertz 24 bit and that exists throughout pretty much the entire intercom system so it allows me to do a lot of fun things that are not possible in other intercom systems having the ability to do very cool mixes with equalization and compression and a whole bunch of other things that I control myself instead of relying on another manufacturer to do that for me so this is going to be a long video so uh, strap in and, and come in, come along, enjoy the ride as we go, and we'll talk about all the different components in my intercom here in my trailer. All right, so I'm actually going to show you guys the mixer itself. So this is the X32 rack mixer that I have here in my trailer. Uh, it's mounted kind of towards the bottom of the equipment rack. I'm actually sitting on the floor right now, give you an idea of where this is positioned. And just above it, I have the headphone amplifier that actually runs all the different stations here in the trailer. I don't really interface with the front panel of this unit very often uh, but it's there if I ever need to and what I, I typically like to leave it on this view right here so it's an RTA so you can kind of see what frequencies are being used and it makes it very easy to discover if there's a problem in your frequency response or you're getting feedback and figure out what frequency that is so anyway just and it's also kind of fun you know being, seeing seeing what's going on with the audio so as you can see as I'm talking here the RTA is showing what's going on with the, with the frequencies there but uh, so anyway, yeah, I really don't interface with the device itself very much. Most of the interface that I do with it, it goes through that X32 edit software. It, it's an easier way to go than working with the device with the device here itself. So, but while I'm here, I also wanted to mention the headphone amplifier that's here, just above it. So this is running channels A and B, both stereo mixes. Uh, for all of the, the stations that are here in the trailer, and for any one of those, I can either select A or B with a button that's here on the front. And then if I want to, I can also change those to mono. This is where the audio levels are set. So a volume control for all the different stations within the trailer. They all live right here, which is a little bit inconvenient, admittedly. But at the same time, generally speaking, because I have compressors and limiters and other things going on with my audio mixer, the audio levels on the intercom tend to be very, very consistent and stay the same throughout the, the course of an entire event. So essentially, once I set the level for a station here, we don't have to change it. It's very, very, very rare that we actually need to adjust any of the volume levels that are here uh, for any reason whatsoever. It's just once we set it, it tends to work really, really well. But each of the different stations gets its own output on here. So we've got the technical director, director, uh, CG, PTZ, audio booth, um, and then to a, to the other the other two as well. So anyway, um, but yeah, so the up the four channels of audio are being output directly from here into the headphone amplifier uh, for mixes A and B for here in the trailer. In terms of what's physically connected to this. We have the inputs that are here in the trailer, and then a couple other sources as well. So like my ATEM switcher, which is just out of sight here. Uh, the time code inputs and outputs are, are being routed into there. Also interface into the two-way radio uh, is, is coming from here. And speaking of, this is actually the two-way radio that I'm currently using. This is a Midland GMRS radio, and there's an audio output that's on here. So this connect cable right here goes to one of the inputs that's on the X32 rack. And it also splits into a speaker that's in the wall, and so I can always hear what's going on with a two-way radio system there as well. So right now that's just a one-way interface, and so audio coming into the two-way radio goes into the intercom. I don't have it going the other way. I'm still trying to find an interface that will actually make that possible. So for the time being, all the audio on the two-way radio system comes into the intercom, but not the other way around. Each one of the eight stations in the trailer has a microphone input and a headphone output, and most of them also have a toggle switch that you can use to temporarily mute one of the microphones if need be. 
For the headsets I use here in the trailer, I mostly use the Audio-Technica BPHS-1 headsets. Let me let you hear what those sound like. Now you're hearing me through the Audio-Technica BPHS-1 headset going into my X32 rack mixer. This mix is exactly what camera operators would be hearing, so it has the same effects applied that would be applied during an actual event. It has the same high-pass filter, the same equalization, the same gate, the same compressor, the same auto mix that would normally be present while we're shooting for a client. So this is exactly what the camera operators would be hearing in their headset. You notice that the mid-range and the sibilance are actually art artificially boosted a little bit in order to inc increase intelligibility. And also, they let off, the signal level is very highly compressed so that as I'm talking, the, uh, the volume of my voice actually stays very consistent from start to finish. As I've mentioned many times, I use the Blackmagic Design fiber system in order to get video to and from my cameras. And one of the advantages of that is that these units actually take care of intercom as well. And they do a pretty good job of it if you don't use the built-in mic and headset jacks that are on this unit. This unit right here is called the Studio Converter, Studio Converter 2 more accurately. And this has four fiber connections on the back. So one, two, three, and four and audio outputs, SDI outputs, so this is the video coming from cameras. Video going back to cameras comes in on an SDI input over here, program input, it also has a loop through there. But also interesting over here on, on the right, it has BNC connections for audio. So there are two connections for headphone, two connections for microphone. And these use AES EBU, AES3 audio, uh, so it's digital, stays digital the whole way. And I'm going to be able to take advantage of that and be able to get audio in and out of these units using Audinate AVO adapter. So this is an AES-3 adapter. It actually has input and output, and each one of those is two channels, even though the intercom actually only uses one. But this allows me to get the intercom audio uh, out of my X32 rack mixer into my fiber system. So the output on this, the AVO, goes to the headphone input on my studio converter and then the mic output on this goes to the input on my AVO adapter. That allows me to do audio in both directions and each one of my studio converters, I have three of these actually, uh, each one of these has an AVO adapter and that gives me access to the audio coming from camera operators to inject that into my Dante mixer and then be able to return send return audio back to camera operators. Having it hooked up this way allows me to have each one of these groups of four cameras receive its own audio mix, and I can essentially isolate camera operators that way. We had an event a few months ago where we were producing two concerts simultaneously, and I was able to use the two separate studio converters in order to do two separate intercom uh, party lines. And so the technical director for the first four cameras was on one and the technical director for the second four cameras was on another one of these studio converter units here in the trailer. I didn't have to rewire anything. It was just a bonus feature that I have because I'm using the Dante setup that I have. On the opposite end of the connection on the studio converter, I have my fiber breakout box. This is what goes inside of a venue and all the connections come in over a single fiber. This, this fiber uh, cable has 24 strands. 16 of those are currently being used for cameras and return feeds. Actually, no, it's more like 20. 20. 20 of them are being used for, for camera feeds and return feeds. And intercom is included, included as part of that, the way the Blackmagic system works. So at each camera, I have, this is the camera converter from Blackmagic Design. And it's, this device converts fiber to video in two directions. Uh, so if you look on the back side here, this is where the fiber comes and goes, and this is a LC connection. And then we have our camera connections over here. So we have an SDI input and an SDI output for on, on camera monitor. There's also HDMI camera input and HDMI output for monitor. But also, because it does intercom, we have connections for headset here. In this case, I'm using the HyperX Cloud Stinger headsets. These are the best that I found for, for this sort of, sort of work. And it plugs into the head, headphone jack there and it has four poles in there, so it's stereo audio, stereo headset anyway, there's no stereo audio coming out of the, the studio converter, but stereo headset with microphone and ground on one single connection, so I just plug that into the headset jack there, and that gives me 
audio uh, both directions. So able to listen and be able to talk. All the audio going over the fiber is basically just an additional channel on SDI. So SDI, if you're familiar with it, actually carries 16 channels of audio all the time. It's always there. And that's 48 kilohertz, 24 bits. So we're talking very high quality audio, better than CD quality, significantly better than CD quality. And what Blackmagic's doing is they place the intercom audio on, in this case, channel 16 of the SDI feed. So they're just repurposing a, a signal that's already there. And that gives us very high quality audio and the intercoms actually sounds great and this particular headset works really well at isolating audio uh, iso isolating sound from the outside and so the camera operators are able to hear quite easily what's going on on the intercom it actually works really really well so just br very briefly give you a tour of the, the buttons that are related to intercom here so on the far right we've got the push to talk and and then a button to set the headphone audio level, headphone volume level. And then we can have a, a little further over, we have buttons to increase and decrease the microphone audio level there as well. For anybody who needs intercom but is not going to be on camera in a venue, I've got ways of connecting them in as well. So since I'm running on Dante, that allows me to use Dante belt packs. The ones that I've selected for my system are ones from... Studio Technologies, uh, studio technolo studio tech.com, and this is the model 372A belt pack, body pack, whatever you want to call it. Belt pack is, I guess, the more common term. And these are Dante based, and so audio comes and goes via an Ethernet cable. In this case, it actually receives power via Ethernet as well. So if I flip this around, you can see that the lights are on there. We actually have a uh, connection, and the Ethernet connection here is going into my 24 port uh, switch here. This is a power over ethernet switch. So devices that support power over ethernet, all I have to do is plug them into this switch and they will receive power. And that's how these belt packs actually are powered. They receive that power directly over the ethernet cable. I don't have to have run a separate cable. There's no battery in here. It's just all powered over the same connection that we use in order to get audio to and from the rest of the intercom. One of the things that I really like about this particular model, the 372, and similar on the 373, is that it has a TRRS connection there. So I'm able to use the same HyperX Cloud Stinger headsets with these body packs, belt packs, that I use with my uh, Blackmagic uh, camera converter uh, belt packs as well. So the same headsets work. And these are pretty inexpensive compared to... So the uh, buyer dynamic that these that I would normally be using with this, these are about a tenth the price. So considerably less money. And you're talking about production equipment. And they're not as rugged, but I'm, I feel a lot better about replacing a $40 headset than I do a $200 or $300 headset that would might be used in its place. Again, these actually work really well, work quite well with, with the Studio Technologies belt pack. It does also have your more traditional, in this case it has the five pin that would be used with an RTS system. And I do have some of those as well, and you can see some, a couple of them behind me there. Uh, those work just fine as well with these, with these packs. Uh, but it's nice to have that flexibility of being able to use the less expensive headsets with uh, professional intercom gear and have it work really, really well. This is the HyperX Cloud Stinger headset. It's going through the Studio Technologies 372A belt pack. This audio is going over Dante, power over Ethernet support to uh, power the belt pack. This is exactly what somebody who's wearing this headset would actually sound like on the intercom. Because my intercom system is based on Dante, I can do anything with with it that I can do with Dante, which means interfacing into other equipment is actually really easy. So here I've got one of my Yamaha TO1608D Dante interface devices hooked up and plugged into my, my Dante network. And this will allow me to connect into pretty much any analog gear that I need to as part of the intercom, not just for inter interfacing into my main audio system, but as part of the intercom as well. And I'll show you one example of that. This is by a company called AV Lifesavers. It's an intercom adapter unit. This particular one is made for interfacing with ClearCom systems. And so if I need to interface, interface my, my intercom into a ClearCom system, a venue's already got one and I want to be able to talk to them, I just get this box out and then it's really just a matter of patching some XLRs into the system. So here I'm going to have the orange come from output one on there and then go to the input on that box and then have 
the audio output of that box go into input 16 on my TO unit. And then at that point, all I really have to do is plug in the XLRs, 3-pin XLRs on this box into a ClearCom system. And then the two of them are talking together. So that allows me to interface my intercom into a ClearCom party line or ClearCom compatible party line system that's already in existence in a venue or on location or whatever. So very handy there. Whenever I have operators or people on the crew who need a headset but they need to be wireless, I have my Hollyland Mars T1000 system that I did a review for here on the channel last year. And this interfaces very easily into the rest of my system because it has an analog input and output on it. In this case, they use an RG45, so Ethernet light connection. And they publish details on, in the manual and on their website of how to wire a cable in order to get standard line level audio in and out of it. So I've made, made that cable and I can just plug that into my TO1608D unit. So in this case, I have the audio from the, the Mars system coming into channel 16 and the audio from the rest of the intercom coming out on output one and then it goes back into the wireless system so that allows me to add wireless people onto the existing intercom system as well the audio you're hearing, hearing now, now is coming, coming through, through the Hollyland Mars T1000 wireless, wireless intercom system, system. Uh, uh, coming, coming through, through my X32 rack mixer, mixer going, going through, through the, uh, not the interface, interface. In order to communicate, to communicate with, with the intercom system. system. So, so using the four wire interface, interface on the side of the base station, base station in order to extract, extract audio, audio into, into my intercom system. And one last one I want to show you guys here before I put this stuff away. So if I have some people who need to hear what's going on but don't necessarily to talk back, or if I need people who need uh, IFB, so in uh, interruptible foldback or feedback, uh, I can interface very easily, very, very easily into those systems using the same technique. So here I can just take the audio output, one of the audio outputs on that unit, the TO unit, and then plug that into my in-ear monitor transmitter, and then anybody who needs to hear what's going on just wears a body pack and some in-ear monitors, and they're good to go, and they can hear whatever's going on. So we've used this quite a few times with on-air talent. One of the other cool things about Dante is that I can do things with it using software that I can't, I couldn't necessarily do otherwise. So one example of that is interfacing into a telephone system. So I have on here on this computer a little piece of software called a MicroSIP, and this interfaces into the telephone system that I use for my company. And one of the cool things I can do with that is uh, I take the intercom audio and then put that onto a conference bridge. So I actually have a conference calling system, part of my phone system, and I can dial into that and include that on my intercom. Uh, so for example, all I have to do here is dial com C O M M S and then hit call. Now using this software, it makes it possible for anybody who wants to join the intercom to just call in on a, on a phone. They just dial into my conference bridge, dial in that code, and then they're on. And that can include them as part of any portion of the intercom that I want, whether that be the camera operators or audio crew or anything else. I can, it can even be going, uh, even go into an IFB if I need to. Just having that generic flexibility of out routing audio from any source to any destination allows me to include any audio from anywhere to any and send that to anywhere that I want to. It's a very cool. We've used this a number of times when we've had camera operators that are remote and sending me video over the internet. I just have them call in on their cell phone and then they're talking to me on my main intercom and I'm able to give them direction remotely as well just through my normal headset like I would anybody else as if they were on site. Very cool. The same technology can actually work with other software as well. So if I wanted to use something like Discord, like the audio on Discord in order to produce an intercom there, I can do that. And those of you who are on the Discord server can't see it, but I actually do have a channel on my Discord server that's just there for intercom for anybody on my staff who actually needs that. So I can dial in from anywhere in the world and join the intercom uh, with everybody else that's running on, on site in a production. One of the other cool things about having Dante is that I'm able to route any audio source from anywhere to anywhere else. So audio sources that are normally only destined to go to main audio mix can also be included as part of the intercom as well. Say, for example, we're shooting a sporting event where we've got a sideline reporter. Their wireless mic can not only be used as part of the main audio mix, but we can actually use that to talk back to the rest of the crew as well. So when they're not live, we can actually have their audio be injected into the intercom via Dante. So able to people that are work, working the sidelines are able to talk to one another 
through the intercom system as well. So having that interface there allows a lot of flexibility that we wouldn't have otherwise. So let's jump in and take a look at my configuration on my X32 rack mixer. So, so this is the X32 edit software that I'm running here. This is basically the interface that I use to control the mixer. The mixer does have uh, an interface on the front panel, but it's kind of slow to use. It's way faster in order to just actually use this X32 edit software. So you guys can see here my various inputs. So the first eight inputs that I have here, so channel one through channel eight, those are the various stations I have throughout in the trailer here. So each one of the places where you might sit in the trailer has a dedicated audio input and has uh, audio output on my headphone amplifier. Using this, I'm able to build a mix of any combination of stations here in the trailer. And because I'm using a real audio mixer, I have a lot of other capabilities associated with that. So, for example, if I select the director input here, I can go ahead and go into uh, config. That's where I can set, change the polarity, turn on phantom power for the microphones that need that. Uh, I can set the gain, uh, set a low cut on frequency response in order to get rid of any rumble, add a delay if need be, and come over to a, a gate. I actually do use gates because there's a lot. There can be a lot of things going on in the trailer, a lot of background noise, and so I have gates set up on most of those microphones so that unless somebody is actively talking, you're not hearing what's coming through their microphone. Uh, I've got it set up as an expander, so it's basically lowering the level of background noise, not entirely eliminating it. And then we also have uh, other dynamics, so I have, compre I have compression turned on, so in this case, I start compressing anything above minus 28 decibels at a ratio of 4 to 1 and do a makeup gain on the output of that of 12 decibels for that particular microphone. But then I can come over to the EQ section and you can see that I've got a little bit of EQ applied on there. Um, got, we've got the low cut that I mentioned a moment ago and then a slight boost in the mid-range to help make the audio a little bit more intelligible. A slight boost up in the sibilance range again to make audio a little more intelligible. Uh, and that just helps to make it a little easier for the person who's talking to be understood on the other end. So it may not be super clean like you would expect for a typical audio mix, but it suits the purposes of intercom by boosting those frequencies that are most important for being able to understand what somebody is saying. So as you listen to the samples that I'm providing here on the video today, you'll notice that there is a little bit boost, a little bit of boost in the mid-range and in the sibilance area, just in order to make it easier, in order to make vocals a little bit more clear. The send section. This is actually where I re really get into the beauty of using this mixer in order to produce my intercom. So uh, I can either make, mix it here, but there's an, actually a, a more clean, easier to understand way to do that. And that's over here in this section. So what I'm essentially doing is I'm building a whole bunch of different audio mixes in this mixer in order to send to different places. So those of us who are in the trailer here on a normal crew, we the audio mix for those people is done through the main left and right mix on the X32. And you can see I've got, I've got that selected here. And then any changes that I need to make in terms of level are only being done for the people that are here in the trailer. So any, any changes that I make here in this mix only impact the people that are here in the trailer wearing a headset. What I'm doing on, for anybody else is I'm building sub-mixes. So for example, if I come down here to camera one through four, this is the mix that's going out to camera operators one through four. And so I can send different, not only send different channels, but different levels as well. A good example of that is the program feed. Here in that trailer, we like to be able to hear the audio that's going on the program feed with decent amount of level. People on running camera, on the other hand, might not. And so I'm able to reduce that. If I scroll over a little bit to the right here, you see that channels 31 and 32 on this on this mixer are the program feed coming directly from my TF3 mixer over Dante, of course. And I've got the audio mix for the program turned way down for the camera operators as compared to those of us here in the trailer. So minus 12 dB for those of us in the trailer. And then for, for camera operators, one through four, they're getting that mix at minus 26 dB. So quite a bit quieter. And I can even turn it off if I want to. But having this ability to create unique mixes for anybody who's involved in the intercom really ups my game quite a bit and allows me a lot of flexibility that I wouldn't have otherwise. I have something very similar for cameras five through eight. 
I mentioned before that I can split up my, my intercom system into two separate party lines, and we've done events where that has been, we've needed to do that. So if camera operators one through four are one, one location shooting one, one thing, and camera operators five through eight are somewhere else shooting another thing, I can set up two separate party lines. And the way I'm able to do that is by turning up and down the various audio sources for that particular mix. So if I was going to be doing a situation like that where I have multiple events going on simultaneously, I would probably want to turn down most of the uh, stations here in the trailer and only enable the audio for the person who's acting as a technical director for that second event to go through on, the, on that second audio output for camera operators 5 through 8. Similarly, for people who are working in the trailer on that second event, I will build a separate audio mix for them. And that headphone amplifier that I have here in the trailer, each one of the outputs can be, uh, can be you can have these, this audio source for that select between two different mixes. And so there's a button on the front, and when I press that button, it switches from the main left-right mix on this mixer to this other COM B, and I have both left and right, it's another stereo mix, uh, that I can build for that and so I'm able to effectively run two separate party lines here out of the trailer uh, entirely separate from one another and if I need to do overlap between them I can certainly do that as well so if we've got if I need to make an announcement to everybody who's on crew I just modify the audio mix here on this mixer in order to send that to anybody who needs to listen so a lot of flexibility there that you don't necessarily get with other systems unless you're running a matrix system which are very expensive and well beyond the scope of what I'm able to do with my small little business that I have here going on additionally uh, I actually do build a separate mix for my audio booth the reason for that is that in the audio booth the person running audio doesn't wear a headset, they're listening through a set of uh, stereo uh, monitors, studio monitors. And we don't want their own audio coming back through, the, through those monitors, otherwise we get feedback. And so I build a separate mix just for the audio booth where their own level is turned down considerably. It's still there just a little bit so that they know that they can be heard, you know, a little bit of side tone so they know that their, their mic is live. But for the most part, everybody else is going to come through much louder than their own audio. And that way they're able to hear the directions from the technical director and, and be able to do their job uh, as uh, mixing audio while still being able to communicate with other members of the crew. That gets into some of the other mixes that I build. So I have this Dante A, Dante B, Dante C, and Dante D. Those are just general purpose that I can send to any, uh, any Dante device. So when, when I demonstrate in a few minutes my Studio Technologies 372A belt pack, the audio mix for that is actually being built on one of these Dante uh, submixes. I very often use the same mix for multiple belt packs, uh, so I don't necessarily need to have dedicated outputs for each one of those but but it, being able to build a separate mix there means that I can isolate people into the various groups into their own party lines and so if I need somebody on a belt pack that's communicating with somebody on a wireless headset but not but those but that audio not be uh, included here in the trailer for anybody on headset I can do that I can build any sort of mix that I that I need to any combination of sources going to any combination of destinations within certain limitations. I can only build so many mixes with this mixer. It's, you know, it's, this is not a, an endless mixer with endless capabilities. There are some limitations there, but I can build quite a number of different mixes. So I've got my Dante A, B, C, and D, and those are used for various things, um, some of which I'll demonstrate here in a little bit. All right, then I also have dedicated mixes for IFB, or interruptible feedback or foldback, depending on who you ask and what the definition of that is. Uh, and occasionally, actually I've used, I've used this feature remotely more than I've used it for on-site. Now, there's been, certainly been a number of times when we used it for, for on-site uh, at a particular venue. We, we need to get audio to on-air talent or uh, to anybody else who might, might be just needing to hear feedback from a director or a producer or whatever. But I'm able to build a separate IFB mix that's totally isolated from what's going on with the, the camera crew or whatever. And when I demonstrate some other software here in a little bit, you'll, see, you'll be able to see how I'm able to get audio into those very easily without having to manipulate this X32 air, uh, edit software directly. All right, so that 
that covers most of it. But there's other. There's one other thing that I really wanted to mention here. Uh, it's the first eight channels of this X32 mixer have an auto mix capability. If you're not familiar with that, it's basically a feature in the mixer which automatically adjusts the levels of the various channels based on what's going on. Not only not only uh, the one channel, but also on other channels as well. So if it detects that somebody is talking on channel four it will lower the volume of all the other channels and so that you're getting less background noise, um, less likelihood for feedback in cases where you might have a speaker somewhere in the room, a uh, monitor system or whatever. And if two people are talking, it, it turns both of those up, but not quite as loud as if only one person is talking. It allows you to have kind of a really consistent mix across multiple different inputs, multiple different microphones. And so I'm using that auto mix feature with these various stations that are here in the trailer in order to make sure that people are being heard, but we're not getting too much background noise as part of that signal that's going out to camera operators or wherever else that signal might be going. So a very nice feature there. Even though I've been really happy with the X32 and getting it to, to run my intercom, it hasn't been without some pain points. And the biggest pain point was actually getting the thing set up with routing the different audio channels, uh, getting those channels in and out. So the mixer is actually capable of mixing more than 32 channels, but it, the expansion card, in this case Dante card, it can only do 32, 32 channels in and out. So in addition to those uh, channels on Dante, I also have a bunch of analog inputs that I'm using on, on on the unit as well and I need to be able to incorporate those and so setting up the routing on the mixer was actually kind of difficult so take a look at some of what I had to do so uh, the main 32 channels on the mixer I had to route all of those through the user in in group that are, that are that's on on the mixer so if I go to my user in configuration you get a better idea of how some of that is set up so the local inputs those are analog inputs and I have those coming from various sources here in the trailer those would the first eight are actually the eight different stations that are here uh, the different desks so when you set the technical director desk that's channel one the director desk ne next to it that's going to be channel two and so forth so each one of the the, the inputs each one of the, the seats here in the trailer goes to one of those first eight inputs on on the mixer. Then you come over to some of these other ones. So channels 9 and, and 10 come from inputs 29 and 30 on my Dante card. And then channels 11 and 12 come from aux, auxiliary inputs 1 and 2 on the back of the mixer. And then we get into the next channel. So 13 through 16, those are channels 1 through 4 of my Dante card and so forth. So that same sort of thing keeps going on uh, throughout the rest of the available 32 inputs that are in there until you get to my program feed which comes in on channels 31 and 32 of the X30 of, of the X Dante card. So that was relatively straightforward. Setting up the output routing was much more of a headache. So if we look at the outputs for the card for example those come from user outs 20, or 17 through 48. And so if I go over to user out, that's how we've got this set up. So the first eight stations, those are on Dante outputs one through eight. So if I need to route audio from, say, the director position or whatever, I can do that. Those first eight outputs are, are available that way. Outputs nine through 12 uh, are also coming from local sources as well. And then we get into the really crazy stuff uh, a little further over here. So Dante outputs 29 and 30 come from internal outputs 11 and 12. Anyway, I'm not going to go through all the detail on it, but it turns into a real nightmare in order to get all this stuff set up. So instead of taking the two hours that I had anticipated in order to configure the, route, the mixer for all of the routing that needed to take place, it ended up taking me two days of tweaking just because of some weird limitations that exist within the X32 mixer. You can't route any source to any output. It, it, there are some, they have to be done in groups, and it's weird, and... I'm not a fan of the way that Behringer set that up. Well, fortunately, I was able to get it going, and it does work, but only just. There are some, some things that I had to give up that I would have liked to have done that I just couldn't because of the way that this mixer is set up. So in the long term, I probably will, will be replacing this with something that's a little bit higher end, but for the time being, it works for, for my particular needs. 
And so for, I probably use this for several years before it comes time to need to replace or upgrade this in some kind of way. And even when I do, the fact that I'm using Dante allows me to do expansions into the whole Dante network without necessarily replacing this mixer. I can add an additional mixer in order to create additional party lines or additional groups uh, for whatever the needs might be. So typical when you're building a party line, you wouldn't have 32 people on it. So I can use auxiliary devices in order to build additional party lines uh, as, in the, as the case may be. So anyway, the routing was kind of a nightmare. Basically, that's the, what I can summarize. Uh, so it took me longer to set up than I, than I thought it, that, it might, that it might. So anyway. Having everything be based on software and networking allows me to do some really cool things in terms of controlling all this too. So one of the things that I've done, I've actually got the BitFocus Companion software set up to talk to my X32 rack and I'll show you a little bit about how that works. So we take a look here at my, my configuration, my list of devices that I have set up in BitFocus Companion. One of those is my X32 mixer and that allows me to control uh, a lot of aspects of the mixer from Companion and from the Stream Deck XL that I have sitting in front of me here. So let me show you a little bit about how that works. So if I go over to the buttons tab and I select this button that's labeled IFBA. So what this button actually does is it takes the audio from the technical director position and when I press that it mutes the audio for the main intercom loop, the main party line and then sends that audio for that one channel over to IFBA. So uh, on, on that particular mix that's on the, the X32 mixer. So you can come over here and look at the code associated with it. First thing that it does is it restores, it stores the level of, of the faders and then it, it sets the level for the faders. So in this case, uh, it's setting the audio level for a technical director to minus 12 dB. So it's not fully muting it, just turning it down, uh, minus 12 dB. And then for other channels, it sets the level at minus 90, which in terms of the X32 basically means that it's muted. And then for when we get to IFB mix, which is, there we go. So technical director to IFBA, it sets the level to zero. So basically it fades it all the way up. And so you're able to, I'm able to then talk to person on IFBA. And if I pull up IFBA, on the X32 software and press that button, you'll see that fader A, fader, fader 1, channel 1, on that particular submix then gets opened up, set to 0 dB, so it's uh, full, full volume. And as long as I hold that button down, that channel is left at 0 dB. And then once I release it, Companion then restores all those levels for all those particular channels back to where they, they, were, where they were. So it allows me to very easily send audio to a particular channel or a group of channels with very little complexity. All right, I have other buttons that, are, that do very similar things. So I've got buttons for, a, for IFB A and B, for Dante mixes A, B, C, and D, which I demonstrated earlier. So if I wanted to talk directly to a person that's wearing the body pack, the uh, Studio Tech body pack, I just press and hold that button. I'm talking to them. Oh, and them alone, and nobody else is hearing me, so I'm able to communicate in private with somebody that's wearing one of those body packs. I come down here, I've also got similar things as well. So I've got a button here that lets me talk just to the camera operators and mutes the audio for here in the trailer so nobody else in the trailer hears me talking as technical director, and then I release that and everything goes back to normal. Same thing with Com B, which is the second would be a second group, uh, a second party line here within the trailer. Then I've got a button that lets me send audio to only people in the trailer, and that way camera operators and people on other communication loops are not hearing me. And then I've got one that sends audio just over to the audio booth. Additionally, I've got a couple other buttons over here. A cough button, which very temporarily mutes on all channels. A mute that can be toggled on and off. And so if I need, need to have a private conversation here in the trailer, I can do that. And then I've got a button which mutes just the cameras, so if I need to talk to everybody but the camera operators, I can press and hold that. And then I've got this other button here on the upper right, it's called Announce All, and pressing that unmutes me from all channels, from all buses. So when I press that, everybody everywhere is going to hear me talking on that as well. Now I have pages set up not just for the technical director, but for the director position, for the audio booth, for the replay desk, which is where I happen to be sitting, for... Um, and then if I need to set up other ones, it's really a matter of just copying those pages to a new page within Companion and then making the official, making the, making the changes for the audio source. So instead of technical director as the source, it might be uh, the CG desk or whatever. 
So a lot of cool things going on there. The other advantage to doing this out of Companion is that it also gives you the ability to do it via a web page as well. So within the Companion software, they have this web buttons and the mobile buttons features. I'm going to show you the web buttons here. So a Companion come over here. Any device in the trailer here can pull up this page on their browser on that, at that station. And for example, if we need to go to the audio booth, the audio booth needs control over this, they have access to these same capabilities as well. So the person at the audio booth can press and hold the button that says cams and then talk only to the camera operators. So it's kind of like having a matrix intercom without the complexity or cost of an actual real matrix intercom, utilizing the power of software in order to change the, the configuration, the setup of different devices that are included as part of my audio network and my Dante network and my intercom allows me to do a lot of things that are just not possible otherwise. So there you go. It's a pretty comprehensive, pretty complex system, but it allows me a lot of capabilities that you just don't find anywhere else on intercom systems. So there's a lot of things that I can do with mine that I just haven't seen done anywhere else. So I've actually been pretty happy with it. I've been using it now for almost four months uh, with the new mixer, and it's, it's worked really well. I've been very, very happy, very, 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 very pleased. And the people who have worked on productions with me have also been pretty pleased with it, the, way, the way that it works, the way that it sounds as well. I always get compliments on how the quality of the audio is on my intercom compared to everybody else. It's plenty loud, it's very intelligible, uh, just very high quality audio throughout because it's using 48 kilohertz 24-bit audio everywhere. You get very, very high quality audio. It sounds fantastic. So anyway, um, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I try to do video production related content at least once a week. I've been doing a little bit more than that recently. I've had a little more free time available, so I'm doing more videos. If you're not, uh, if you're interested in seeing more of this type of content, I actually do video specifically for people who are paying members and Patreon supporters for the channel. So if you want to see more of this type of content, you can actually join us join us there. So you can click on the Join button on, uh, that's just below this video or go to Patreon at djp.li slash Patreon in order to, to sign up there and produce uh, behind-the-scenes content. A lot of the productions that we do, uh, those are available there extra videos that you won't, don't see otherwise. You also get early access to the videos before they're published, before they also have advertising added to them. So if you don't like watching the ads, you can actually just sign up for one of those. Uh, the, the memberships start at just $2 a month, so try to be very affordable. And all that, that support is very much appreciated. That money doesn't really go into my pocket. It's used to purchase additional equipment for the channel. So uh, products that I bring in for review, the money for those comes in from the support that you guys provide here for the channel. So I'm not really taking anything for the time that, uh, that I spend making these videos. That money really does go just towards producing additional content for the channel. So any support there is very much appreciated. If you're running your own video production service, I'd love for you to take a, a, a Take a look at a website that I've created. It's called crewaccess.com. Link there on the bottom of the screen and in the, in the description for this video. It's a website that I built for, for my own company in order to help me keep track of my employees or, or my crew members, keep track of my equipment, keep track of my finances. Everything that I need in order to run my video production company is there, and I've made that available to others as well. There are plans that range from free which you can use forever if you'd like if it meets your needs but there are also paid plans that offer more features and reduce some of the limitations that are imposed on the free plan as well so go and try that out again you can try the free, free plan for as long as you want I, i'm not going to cut you off after a certain period of time you can use it for eternity as, as long as i'm able to run that server so anyway i think that's going to do it for now so anyway thanks for everyone for watching and have a great day